Today we're going to talk a little bit about diminished chords. Now the very definition of diminished means less than whole. As you can imagine, this does wonders for the self-esteem of a diminished chord, being that its name is literally pointing out its shortcomings. Which makes it no surprise that diminished chords sound so unstable because of this glaring lack of self-esteem. So I thought we'd kind of break down what they mean, and hopefully they will be more easily understood when to use them, what they are, etc., etc. Now there are three types of diminished chords. There's a diminished triad, a half diminished or minor 7 flat 5 chord, or a full diminished chord, which is also known as a diminished 7th chord. So let's start with a diminished triad. Again, a triad is just a three note chord. So a diminished triad would be a minor chord with a flat 5. Now what does that mean? Let's take, let's take, a, let's take an A right here, right? So A minor is an A, a C, and an E. If you play them together, make a chord is a nice minor sounding chord. Now, if we were to flatten the five, the five being one, two, three, four, five, right here, this E, if we were to flatten it, flatten it, it'd make an E flat, right? So an, ar an arpeggio for a diminished triad in A would be an A, a C, and an E flat. Now, we can put that together as a chord, starting with the root note here, and it would look like this. We'd have the A on the fifth fret of the E string, the C on the third fret of the A string, and then the E flat right here. But look at that, that's, oh my God, that's ridiculous, okay? So I think especially like in rock music, diminished triads will be more used between just using the flat five as its own thing between the one. So I'll demonstrate that right now. Now if we just take a power chord, right? An A power chord. And we kind of just do like a, like a rock chug. We can flatten the five just by taking your ring finger, going to your middle finger like this. So. so we're taking a chord and we're making it less stable by altering the relationship between the one and the five, which is like the strongest relationship in music, right? So we're altering it. Now, technically I don't have the minor third in this chord. I've just taken a two note thing. So one thing you can do with diminished chords is you can take existing chords and make them less stable and add a lot of tension just by flattening the five. Now if we want to take a more appropriate hand position for a chord that is technically a diminished triad, you would do an inversion. So let's do that same thing where we're going to do an A, a C, and an E flat, but let's start with the C. Now this is a, a really great lesson in intervals, right? So. A diminished chord is essentially stacked intervals. What that means is an interval is just a space between two notes. So with an A, we have a three note interval, also known as a minor third, right? Now, a minor third from a minor third will end up giving you that flat five. That's why that first kind of voicing we did, we're just going from five E to three A, and down a string back two frets is a way to get to a minor third. If you just repeated that here, minor third, minor third, we're stacking these intervals on top of each other, but we're gonna do it now in a, in a way that makes more sense by doing an inversion where we play the, the third first. So the C is gonna be first, we're gonna have the C here, we're gonna have the flat five of the A here, there's that minor third again, but we're gonna take the octave A here. So the diminished triad voicing we're gonna learn looks like this. And now just remember, your root note is actually where your middle finger is. So you can kind of take a root note that you know. Maybe if you know this is a G, you can play its triad by octaving down and then making that chord, just like that, right? So those are diminished triads. And again, we're just taking two minor thirds and stacking them on top of each other. Now the next type of diminished chord would be a half diminished, more commonly known as a minor seven flat five chord. Now I'm gonna link to a video I did on just minor seven flat five chords, but again, I think these are some of the prettiest diminished chords. Like for example, here's a B minor seven flat five. Now the reason it's called half diminished is because we're taking those minor thirds, but then we're adding um, uh, an interval that's not a minor third, right? So uh, in a half diminished minor seven flat five chord, we're just taking a minor seven chord and we're flattening the five. So it's a cool name of a chord because it's telling you exactly what you're doing. Now these are really good in not just jazz progressions, but used as like passing tones. Now the half diminished chord, the minor seven flat five chord occurs on the seventh note of any scale, right? So in the key of C, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So uh, 
In the key of C, B half diminished, or B minor seven flat five would be the chord that you could use the natural extension in the key. So uh, what does that mean? Let's take a progression where we just go from a C major to an A minor and back to a C, right? To kind of create a little bit more tension and release, as they call it in chord progressions, we're gonna add that half diminished minor seven flat five chord in there on the B, right? So we need a voicing for that. And the voicing we're gonna use is an A string rooted voicing that looks like this. So my root note is on the B. The next note is gonna be the D string, 3D, 2G with my middle finger, and my pinky is gonna be on the D, which is 3B, right? So it would be 2, 3, 2, 3. Not really a super difficult voicing, but it has a cool sound to it. Now, this is gonna naturally resolve as this, this is the seventh chord in the key. It's gonna naturally resolve on the one. And again, this is the key of C, so. Now, if we added it in that progression like we did before, between the A and the C, it's gonna create more tension that's gonna be released with the C. So we have A. Which sounds a lot better than just. I mean, better is relative, obviously. But half diminished chords, are used as passing chords. You can connect to any two chords, even if it's not in the key, right? Like, let's just say I'm gonna go from like a C major seven into like a D minor seven. I'm kind of skipping this note right here, right? So let's say I'm going back and forth. So it's a different type of tension. It's not something that resolves on the one, but you can always use it in passing. So I just threw that minor seven flat five chord on the note in between, and it kind of just added something a little bit different, right? Now this is gonna take us to our third type of diminished chord, which is a diminished seventh chord, otherwise known as a full diminished chord. Now, uh, this is actually a pretty interesting chord, and this also comes from stacking intervals. So the first triad we did, we stacked minor thirds on top of each other that gave us three notes a triad. Now this is gonna be a seventh chord, so it's gonna be four notes, but all stacked in minor thirds. So let's play this on just one string, the open E string, right? So if we start with the E and do a minor third, we go three frets higher to a G. We go a minor third from there, three frets higher. B flat or A sharp. Three frets, another minor third from here. C sharp or D flat. Now go another minor third from here and we end up right where we started on an E. So the interesting thing about this is there's only 12 notes in music. And if you go three notes at a time, you'll start with one note, three notes, three notes, three notes, and you're back to where you started. So the interesting thing about diminished seventh chords is that one chord voicing could actually be four different chords because if you keep circularly going through minor thirds, where you started is really kind of inconsequential, right? This will make more sense in a second. So let's learn a voicing for a diminished seventh chord. And since we already know the A string voicing of a minor seven flat five chord, it's really easy. You just take that voicing and you move it down one string. So I have my pointer finger on the D string two, my ring finger on the G string three, my middle finger on the B string two, and my pinky on the high E string three. Now, I can perceive any one of these four notes as being my root note because as I cycle through, they're just gonna, you can look at them as inversions because they're all the same chord, okay? So if I move this down three frets, one, two, three. I'm getting the same four notes that I did here, just in a different order. So, here's the first diminished seventh. I'm gonna move it up a minor third from, I can think of it as like the second fret to the fifth fret, two to five to eight to 11. And then I go back another, a uh, minor third, go up another minor third and I end up an octave higher than where I started. So it's a really unique chord because you can just kind of cycle through the inversions and the same chord can have four different names and it's just how you're perceiving the root note. Now, this actual stacking of intervals, and again, let's just look at a real quick arpeggio, right? If we were just to take anything, right? If we took like a, like a D and we wanted to make a D diminished seventh, we could just stack minor thirds on top of each other. So start here, go to here. So one, two, three, four. And then the next time I would go up minor third, I'd end up back on a D note, right? So it's a good way to kind of connect 
a note to each other. Now, no individual major scale key has all these same four notes in them. So it creates a really kind of, just, just more tension, really. Now, another interesting way to look at that is its relationship to the dominant seven chord. So stay with me here, right? If you take any kind of dominant seven chord, like let's just take the A string voicing of that D, right? So a D seven. If you drop the, the root note, or actually raise it, if you raise it a half step, you get a diminished seven. So the way I kind of like to look at diminished sevenths is I'll take a chord I'm already very familiar with, right? Like a D7. You might even know this voicing where the open D string is our root note. If we just raise that a half step, a semitone, we'd end up with that voicing we just learned. So I kind of like to see diminished seventh chords as just an alteration of a dominant seventh chord. And what you can do there is you can use that in different chord progressions. So let's just take something like a, like a D7 to an E minor seven to an A, and then back to a D, right? Now, I can easily alter this D7 to make it a diminished seventh chord by just raising that root chord, or the root note, so. So it's a very jazzy type thing to do. I'm starting with a D7, I'm raising the root, which now, this is my new root for a uh, diminished seventh chord, so I can look at this as like a D sharp diminished seventh, an E flat diminished seven. so D7, E flat diminished seven, E minor seven, to an A, back to the D. There's a lot of different things you can do. So, on top of this voicing that we did for a diminished seven, we also have another one in the A string where you can just think, of a voicing you may already be familiar with, a dominant seven voicing with a raised root note, right? So it ends up looking just like this. Anyways, you can really feel free to plug these into any spot. The The cool thing about diminished chords is they kind of sound unstable, right? They, they sound a little strange because it's almost like you're going out of the key even if you're staying in the, in the key. So it's a really great thing to do to kind of just experiment, throw it on any root note, see how it sounds, and then kind of search for the resolution because there are kind of different types of resolution that you can achieve depending on the chord progression in question. So just learn a couple voicings and then just throw them on different root notes and kind of, you, you'll really develop an ear for how you want diminished chords to sound, whether they're triads, whether they're minor seven flat five chords, whether they're full diminished, diminished seventh chords and just kind of experiment with them and your own ears are going to kind of make these different connections and uh really once you know about kind of the construction of the diminished chords you'll start seeing them more in all types of music not just jazz and even just kind of like pieces of it like that like the relationship between a root and a flat five like right now again the arpeggio remember for the diminished triad was an a a c and an e flat kind of take pieces of it. like first take the flat five relationship and then take the third to the flat five which is just a minor third and there's, there's really no limit to what you can do with diminished chords but now that you know how they're constructed a couple of different ways in which you can use them hopefully we can start getting this diminished chord self-esteem back up to where it belongs and it have it be a, a very easy to use and well executed addition to anybody's chord vocabulary